In the last video, I've talked about how you take a long straight wire and coil it round and round into many turns and so that you get a solenoid. How it is possible that the magnetic field pattern around the long wire can turn into this uniform this uniform um, few lines inside the solenoid. But there is actually a, a formula that allows us to calculate the strength of this magnetic field. Now what I like to do is to get an idea of how strong the field is if I connect uh, say a simple battery to this to this solenoid. So let, let me um, let me describe this this solenoid a little bit more so that uh, we have a better idea what we're talking about. Um, let's think about what 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 are the things, what are the the factors that will that will affect the strength of this magnetic field. Let's say um, well, obviously, when the field lines come out and spread out, the magnetic field would be weaker outside. So I'm mainly interested in the magnetic field inside. I'll call that B. With the magnetic field inside, I would expect that that um, that would be that would be stronger than the field outside. Now, the magnetic field B, it should obviously depend on the current. Now, based on based on these numbers here, these resistances and and the voltage, you can use the Ohm's law to find the current. Now, if you do that, you find that the current for this example is zero point one ampere. Yeah, I'll, I'll call that I. Represent that by I. So obviously, if the current is stronger, we would expect a, a stronger magnetic field in the solenoid. What other things can affect the strength? The number of turns. The number of turns should affect the strength. Now, um, so suppose that Suppose that I have 100 turns around here. Suppose that I have 100 turns of the coin. I'll call that N for the number of turns. Okay, what else can affect the string? There is some th uh, one thing slightly less obvious. That is the length. The length of this little solenoid. Now, if you imagine that this 100 turns um, spreads over, say, a, a, a longer solenoid, uh, as we understand from the last video, each each turn in the solenoid contributes a field, and the field from all the turns merge together to give you the uniform field inside. Now, if you imagine that this 100 turns is spread over a, 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 a greater length, then it would be as if the magnetic field is would become more diluted, right? It, because the, the the strength, the field from each turn has to spread out over over uh, more space in between, so you would expect that, therefore, the, the the magnetic field should become weaker. So conversely, if I if I squeeze this hundred turns into a smaller distance, we would expect a lot more overlap of the field from between from the neighboring turns. So therefore, they would uh, uh, they would add up and give you a, a stronger field. So that seems like uh, 
that seems like a reasonable thought. So, so, I, so because of this, we might expect that the magnetic flux density in the solenoid should depend on the length as well. So let's suppose that for this example, the length of this solenoid is 10 centimeters. That's 0 0.1 meter. I represent that by L. What else is there? Um, another thing that might affect the strength is perhaps the the diameter of, of this of each turn. So um, this that would be the diameter of the solenoid. Let me call that D. Uh, in this case, let's say for example uh, that it is one one centimeter in diameter. Okay, so it does not look like there are other factors involved here. Now, what I want to do now is to get an estimate for the magnetic field inside when I connect this typical 1.5 volts to battery to it with these resistances so that I get a current of 0.1 ampere going through it 100 turns over 10 cm so something that we can easily make okay it might take some time to call it a 100 turns but we can we can do that now there is a formula there is a formula that allows us to calculate this magnetic flux density now, if you are watching this video for uh, to study for your A-level physics exams, I don't think you would need to know this formula. So, but I'm going to write it down anyway, in case you are interested. The formula is magnetic flux density B is equal to mu naught times number of turns times um, the current divided by the length of the solenoid where mu naught as I mentioned um, maybe two videos ago is a constant like the just like the constant called permittivity in the Coulomb's law so we have a constant called permeability for magnetic fields uh, and, and the value of that is 4 pi times 10 to the power of minus 7 in SI units. So there is actually a formula. Now, I'm just going to use this to quickly estimate an answer. Um, I, I'll put this, put this in brackets just to remind you that you may not need this for your, for your A-level exams. So what I just want to do is to, is to get an idea using this formula of the typical um, magnetic flux density we can actually get when we if we make this circuit so if you put these numbers in put the permeability in that's about 10 to minus 6 if, if you calculate this so it's about 10 to the minus 6 the n there in this example is 100 the I in this example is 0.1 ampere. The L here is 0.1 meter. So these two cancel. Okay, so this these two will cancel, and this times this will give me um 0 0.0001 of a Tesla. So quite a small field. Quite a small field. Smaller than, uh, if you remember my examples on typical 
magnetic flux density from three videos ago. It's typical. This is this would be smaller, um, less than ten percent of the strength of say a refrigerator magnet, right? But um, but still stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. So it's that kind of that kind of strength. So nothing nothing exciting, right? Just a weak everyday magnetic field that you get. And it's probably not very useful at, uh, either if you want if you're hoping to use this magnetic field to attract something, like some iron nail or even some iron filings. They would probably hardly hardly move if, if you bring this magnetic field close to any iron object. So that's uh, not very exciting, but there is actually a way. There is actually a way to increase the strength of this magnetic field, and that is using what we know about electromagnets. You know, if you take a piece of iron, you take a piece of iron. Um, okay, I'll. This green color to show the iron. If you put, if I put a piece of iron rod inside here, the field will increase by about a thousand times. The field inside will increase by about a thousand times. So if I have a piece of iron rod, now this this is. Uh, the magnetic field when it is just air. If I have just air, meaning um, no, no iron rod, nothing inside, just air. But if I have a piece of iron rod, the magnetic field would typically be increased by about a thousand times. It it varies depending on the kind of iron or steel that you use, but it's of the order of a thousand, meaning can be a few hundred, can be a few thousand, and that means that the magnetic field will increase to maybe around 0.1 Tesla. Now that's a lot stronger than our everyday refrigerator magnet. Not as strong as the most powerful magnets in the world, but quite strong. And and you can use this to attract things like iron nails, iron filings, small iron uh, objects. Right, and you'll be become very obviously uh, a piece of magnet. Now, why does this happen? Why does it's good to have an idea about about this? The thing is, if I take a piece of iron, and I'm talking about just iron, uh, uh, this is just a piece of iron that is not magnetized at first. I'm not talking about a piece of iron magnet. Just a piece of uh, iron that is not a magnet. It has not been magnetized yet. Now, even though, even though um, I get a piece of iron that's not magnetized, actually, actually, iron, inside the iron, there will be, it will be divided into lots and lots of small volumes. Right, there will be lots and lots of small volumes, in which each volume is like a is like a tiny magnet. So maybe I have a small volume here, which is like a magnet pointing in one direction. Another another volume there, magnet like a magnet pointing in a different direction, and they're all pointing in all sorts of random directions. So it's a piece of iron is like like a collection of like many many tiny magnets stuck together, sort of compacted together. Lots and lots of tiny magnets. Because they're they all pointing in all sorts of random directions, their magnetic fields cancel. That's why it doesn't act like a magnet. It's not magnetized. But the moment, the moment you put a piece of iron rod into a magnetic field, like inside a solenoid, all of these tiny magnets which are essentially a name for that. These are called domains. 
hexagonal domains or magnetic domains. All of these tiny magnets will will you know, will align themselves, will turn around and all point in the same direction as, as the field, just like a compass, right? Just like what a compass needle would do. They all turn around, all point in the same direction, and when all of these tiny magnets all point in the same direction, their field the, 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 the magnetic fields will all be in the same direction and they will all add together to give you a very strong field. That's why uh, it end, ends up that the moment you put a magnet inside, the magnetic field around here, around the, in and around the solenoid, becomes increased by about a thousand times. And, um, and it's the you can also use other materials like nickel, cobalt, um, and a few other elements that are or, or alloys that are magnetic in nature. Now, while we are here, let's learn. Uh, let me just mention one or two uh, technical terms that. That we would see um, maybe a bit later on when when I talk about the uses of this solenoid and, and electromagnet. Now, solenoids are very useful. They are used for transformers, for alternating currents, for power supplies, and and it's a very important part of of our every, everyday uh, life. Even though we don't we don't actually see it, it brings electricity to our house. Now the this this coil, uh, as I've um, mentioned a few times, don't think I've actually write down the name for for this this coil of wire. There is a proper name for it. It's called a solenoid. A solenoid. Solenoid just means that you take a long piece of wire and coil it round and round. That's a solenoid. Uh, and we um, and and. and this volume inside a solenoid, the volume inside a solenoid is called a core. It's called the core. It just means the center of the solenoid. Now, uh, and it does not refer to any specific area, it just refers to the volume inside. So, for example, if there's nothing inside, if there's just air inside, we describe this solenoid by saying that it is air core. It just means that there is only air inside the solenoid. But if I put a piece of iron inside, I describe this this by by saying that in this iron core, iron core. Now there is also another way to to say iron core, which is to use the chemical or or Latin name for iron. We can also call it a ferrous core. That just means the same as an iron core. And we can also have steel core. Now steel is actually mostly iron, but with some other elements mixed inside to make it stronger. But it makes a huge difference to the magnetic properties. Uh, if you have learned about um, temporary and permanent magnets, and, and, and that we should uh, not use permanent magne magnets in electromagnets. Okay, because steel cannot steel can be magnetized, but it's very hard to demagnetize. So we would use steel for permanent magnets. But soft iron, right, which we call maybe soft iron, soft iron core, can be magnetized and demagnetized easily. So it's good for uh, using S and electromagnets. Now, 